All right, welcome everybody back to the 401 Jake Show. Today we have a great guest, Tom Frost out of California. Tom is an advisor that is doing some major things based on some of the new regulations that are out. You probably know and heard about Cal Savers. We're gonna dive into that. Before we get into all that regulation and all the great opportunities that lie ahead for all of you advisors and wholesalers, I wanna hear Tom's story. Tom is a unique guy. He brings a ton of energy. Tom, give us some background. How did you end up like in the 401k industry? Why are you here? Give us, give us some context. Sure. I, I fell in love with 401k in 1998 when it saved my life um, or saved my finances, really. I was working for a financial media firm in, uh, in New York City and um, uh, fresh out of college, first job, thought to myself, you know, this is great. I've got a $24,500 a year salary. I'm just, you know, living large in New York. OK, because I'd never done budgeting before. I didn't know what that mean, what that meant. Uh, cost of living in New York. And uh, very quickly, I'd say within 11 months, I'd racked up $13,000 of, of um, bills and uh, debt. And I thought to myself, now, wait a minute, something's going wrong here. And um, uh, the cool thing was, was that 401k was what wound up saving me. And here's how it did. Uh, my employer happened to have a safe harbor plan. And when they did, I wasn't really paying attention to it, but I was told by someone really you know, really important in my life, go ahead and do that and do it to the max. And uh, so when I was confronted with these credit card bills, I looked around and I thought to myself, I'm in a hole that I can't get out of, except for the fact that I've got this 401k account. And suddenly my books had, as if by magic, balanced themselves. And I had a little bit more than the debt that I accumulated. Now, is not for that, as we know, it's for retirement it's plan savings. But you asked, how did I fall in love with it? And from that moment on, I wanted to do nothing but figure out how to get 401k to as many people as possible. Um, as it turned out, when switching jobs, uh, I was able to negotiate with an employer to um, relieve that debt uh, so that I could transition over to the next next company. And, and, and when I did, I was left with an account balance. And again, from that moment forward, I just I realized this was the, the best thing to happen to Americans uh, at that moment in time. So um, fast forward 25 years, I've been doing nothing before on K clients. And uh, I've been doing them for small to mid-sized businesses and very specifically um, from San Diego to Santa Barbara. So like you, Jake, have this, you know, real focus. Um, you really like to do medical professionals and you're unafraid to share that with the world. Um, you know, I don't mind defining myself as someone who works in my local market. I have global um, companies. I have 1,300 1400 person uh, companies that I serve that are all over the world, but their location is accessible to me and the geography is accessible to me. And, and that's the way I like to run my business, um, which is what brought me to Cal Savers. Um, when Cal well, Savers- Real quick, so, so you're managing, you manage a book of business in, in San Diego, which I think gives a lot of, there's a ton going on in California, as we all know, with, with, with things happening this year. And I think what's unique is in the past, it was all kind of geographic, right? We're all like, this is where we're at. And you've, you've had some success doing that. And I think what's fascinating now with COVID, now you're able to, to do some things even outside of that, but which kind of generated this idea, I think, where we're going to get into, but Cal Savers was a real driver behind kind of your next phase in your, in your business, right? Thousand percent. Yeah. There's no question that service can be delivered anywhere in the world at any point in time with technology. That isn't really the the um, you know the 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 issue that we're resolving. What we're resolving, to the extent that we can, and I think should, as advisors and as an industry, is the entrance of the state plan model. Um, and for that, I look to California um, very specifically, uh, the American Retirement Association's um, one page or last year that caught my attention that absolutely blew me away. I, when I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, um, 750 thousand employers in the state of California did not offer plan. Uh, Two million participants, um, you know, uh, would be participants go without in California because of the absence of a take rate on our category. And so California for it, its part, um, I think viewed the SECURE Act that was coming down the pike that was bipartisan that everyone agrees is a good idea. Let's incentivize employers to get these things up and running. Um, and they did two things with it. The first is they put this binary proposition forward to employers. And that was, you're either going to run a qualified plan or in the absence of that, if you're over five employees, you're going to adopt ours. And um, so confronted with this binary choice as you know, California is, 
always fearless to do. They, they are, you know, ever happy to tell employers how to run their businesses um, or give them choices or, or requirements. It is a very business unfriendly state. Uh, you can imagine the reception that employers who had not been running these um, gave that message and many of them don't want to hear it and aren't listening to it but nevertheless the bills are coming and and it's going to be 250 dollars per employee per month when you don't sponsor a plan or use the state's plan so that's the and, fine right so let's define what cal service that, that regulation which we, the big deadline coming up if you're over 100 employees right is this wednesday september 30th you yep. have to have something in place if you don't it's 250 dollars penalty per employee. And what's that time frame per per month? Per month. So yes, yeah, so you can see how good, right? Yeah. So the good news is that the state's probably going to be solvent pretty quick. Um <laughs> but uh that's, you know that's a hefty I, fine. That is a, that is a steep yes. fine. The cool part is is it doubles in six months. So then it's five hundred per employee per month if you don't either run a plan or um adopt or opt into the state's plan. So they're going to get the attention of employers with these fines. And frankly, they'll probably make more money on the fines than they ever will on running the program. But that didn't stop them from running a program wherein they're taking fees <laughs> on top of it. Yeah. So what is their option? So employers, so advisors, I'm sure most advisors understand all of this and say in California, but I think it's important other advisors outside of, you, of California know what's going on here because it could hit their home front too at some point. So Correct. the Cal Savers program was the, it's the state plan that's essentially an IRA payroll deducted IRA, right? That's it's run by a census, I believe. Um, what, and, and, but it doesn't cost the employer anything to implement that solution. Right. And so that's kind of the idea is like, you're going to get fined unless you say you sign up this, this plan. Let's just, let's just call it, Let's just take that word solution. Is it a solution? <laughs> right. I gotta take that out, right? It's it's if it's a solution, what what problem does it solve? Because it doesn't solve um uh for retirement need. Um it does solve the problem that um people had not started to save for retirement. And I, I would I would grant that. I would also grant that um we can all agree, whether you're listening in New York or in California, um people do need to get on it and start doing a better job of saving for retirement and employers need to get on it and taking a little bit of responsibility uh, from the point of view of, Hey, look, if you're going to hire people and you're going to entrust the first half of their lives to you, um, let's figure out a way to at least enable them to, to, you know, to, to take care of themselves in their older years. I, I don't think, I don't think many people disagree in concept, but as to the solution, um, first of all, the, the, the limits and thresholds for an IRA, as you know, are, insufficient. So if you're put on a trajectory of using that as your primary mechanism, and um, again, the way the state of California went about it is you're not to talk to your employees about this program. We're going to, we want you to A, auto enroll in whether or not you qualify based on income thresholds uh, for an IRA, uh, in this case, a Roth, because it's based on a Roth principle. Um, and B, then don't give any education or anything to the employees about this and send them on their way so that on April 15th of next year, if they don't qualify for the IRA, they're facing a dilemma with their tax professional when it comes time to report that they made contributions to an IRA. Um, the employer's been told not to talk or educate. The state has automatically enrolled it and done it for them. And the employee doesn't qualify. So who picks up the pieces when that falls apart. Um, yeah, the state says there. the state uh, says the participant does, and they say that this participant who was unaware that they were enrolled into this thing and unfamiliar with the um, income eligibility requirements for a Roth IRA, and possibly completely unaware that they're even in the account, is responsible for monitoring and making sure that they don't go over the threshold. I, look, it's um, it solves something, but it definitely creates for a very small subset, specifically the highly compensated employees in your company that you're going to want to retain. Um, it creates some problems that need to be resolved. Uh, I'm sure over time, the way that the state has rolled out other programs, it's probably true that they're going to figure out where their problems are and try to take steps to fix them. 
Um, but as it relates to your audience, Jake, who are all over the US, here's the thing. People assume that this is a California program. Um, states in all 50 states in the union have employers who employ people in California, okay? So if you are in Utah, like Jake is, or if you are in Florida, like Craig is, or if you are in you know, uh, Texas, like Scott is, and you've got employees that are in California and you haven't set up a retirement plan, you're getting the same bill from the state of California that so California employers are. Domicile so, in another state, if you have employees living, because it's based on their, their home address or where they pay taxes, if they pay state taxes there, is that kind correct. of the driver? Correct. So the EDD, which is the, the agency that we have in California, it's, you know, every state has an equivalent, um, knows whether or not the employer is uh, taking payroll taxes for uh, their employee. And they're using that in order to, to, to determine what the fines need to be. So um, you can imagine someone who's in you know, Texas who has three employees in California for whatever reason, you know, a webmaster or a, you know, someone who's setting up a, a small base of operations, a salesperson, whatever, um, suddenly getting a bill in the mail for 250 per California employee, they're going to do two things. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to go to their payroll processor and, or their bookkeeper and say, what is this? And then the second thing they're going to do is they're going to Google Cal Savers. And that's where we're trying to pick up the conversation. We're trying to say, okay, you're principally a Texas, you're principally a Utah, you're principally a Florida company, a New York, any state in the union, but you have this issue that's been created by the state of California. And again, remember 750,000 employers just in California is who this applies to. Now you amplify that and you say all the states in the union, um, who's going to be the one who helps compare California's plan to the Texas plan? It's not me. I only do California. I'm a qualified advisor for sure. This is my, but I'm not keeping track of 50 states plans. Um, the only person who's equipped to do this is an advisor um, to make the comparison for the employer. And that advisor really needs to know and understand their pl state's plan as well. 80% uh, of the states in the union are about to roll these things out. So yeah, isn't there, there's eight total, right? That already have passed, I guess, regulation to say you have to have a plan. CalSavers is the first to actually implement one, yeah, and right? This would be a great place to, to the map. Um, yeah, so and I'll attach the map in our show notes. So if you're um, if you're listening, we'll, we'll attach that so you have that, you know, because it's, it's changing all the time, so we'll have to keep it up. Um, but also I'll attach that, those stats from, uh, from you were talking about the California, how many, how, how many businesses, we'll put those there too. Yeah, so, so when California started, the, started to make its plans, I believe it was three or four states had them um, in, in development. Um, California goes live in September and by my last count, there's 10 or 11. Um, but the map will show just about every state's going to have some variant of this. So if you're an advisor and you're outside of California and you have employers with real and immediate potential problems, which is they've got to set up a plan in order to satisfy CalSavers, this is your opportunity, this wave of startups, which is absolutely massive, again, 750,000 in California, plus all the employers in every other state who hire and, and have employees in California. Um, this is the opportunity for the advisor is to remember where you started. Um, remember that these employers and these businesses are people and they're trying to figure this stuff out and they have really good people, well-intentioned people who are trying to uh, conform to a very confusing set of initiatives. And really in that context, the advisor becomes the hero. And the reason they're the hero, and it, recently I, I, I've never felt better than earlier this year when I saw that it's up to like 80, 80 or 91% of plan sponsors now use an advisor. And I think this is great for this reason. Um, yeah, because the CalSaver solution, it kind of eliminates any fiduciary protection, right? It's like the employer doesn't do anything. CalSavers is just giving you an IRA and the fees are, are, really not that i don't think that aggressive or, or they're not competitive from what you could possibly set up 
your own 401k and have a specific plan designed with some fiduciary protection or some, at least some guidance of what's best for your company. Because one thing we do know about 401k plans and other retirement plans is they're custom and they're always changing with the business. And I think that's a huge value that an advisor has to bring to the table that one plan does not fit all these companies like they're trying to solve. And so um, thinking that CalSavers is a cheaper solution is, is misleading, that it's, it's definitely not that case. Yeah. And I go so far as to say, you know, why, why are there fiduciary requirements to qualify retirement plans? Just start with that. Like, why do we need to ensure that um, the best interest standard of care is being granted to employees? It's for a reason. It's because in many cases, employees don't understand this stuff and they need someone to look out for them. Right. So Cal Savers is going to take the position that oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to be in a risk of plan. You have to ask why. Why don't you want the best interest of your end user to be the standard to which you're held? And I think the answer to that is 80 basis points on a money market fund, um, which to me is, I don't get it. Uh, if, I, if I tried to do that, um, which I never would, it would never occur to me to do that, um, it's just wrong. <laughs> it's wrong on its face. Um, and the thing is, is that absent an advisor to put their finger right on that point and say, stable value at 3% or money market at zero minus 80. I, you know, it's, it's obvious which is better for the end user. And then the question is, well, why doesn't the state want to adopt that? Um, or, you know, the way that they rolled out their health insurance was we're going to partner with um, uh, insurance brokers to go out and explain this stuff. And so they engaged insurance brokers and other benefits providers to do that. But with CalSavers, they very intentionally are saying, number one, employers don't talk to your employees. Number two, we're not going to have advisors and we're going to wave a magic wand and make all the federal requirements go away? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think at some point the IRS is going to say, um, hey guys, you know, Roth IRAs apply under certain circumstances and you can't have them. And if you're not explaining that to your employees, someone's responsible for that, you know, whether in court um, with the IRS or with the employee who's the one who you just put this responsibility on. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is that I feel like there's so much attention in our industry on the PEP discussion right now. And this is way more important given the fact that if you have employees in California, even if you're in another state, I mean, this, this involves everybody. So, which leads to uh, definitely that's a huge problem. And, and what, what is it that you're doing to try and help that? That's what I think draw me to, drew me to you is, is what the energy you're putting into something so much bigger than just managing your practice. Tell us a little bit about um, what you're, you're doing with the 401k plan company. Sure, sure. But I want to be reflexive here for a second and just say, like, how cool is 401k, Jake? <laughs> and the reason I'm saying this is because I'm, I'm sitting here and again, I'm so very narrowly focused on 401k that I feel like I make it my business to learn and absorb everything I possibly can about what's going on in 401k. And I wake up one morning and I've got this guy who I've never met, Jake, explaining to me that um, Empower just bought Mass Mutual. And I'm like, that's usually the information that I'm supposed to give to someone. Um, and here you are not only telling the world this, but also telling advisors how to handle it. So, you know, I, I would say thank you to you uh, for what you're doing here, which is to um, help make advisors better. And I think in that way, there's real alignment um, uh, between what the 401k plan company is trying to do. Um, not just trying to do, we're doing, and it, <laughs> it's going really well. Yeah, you're already uh, moving full steam ahead. You've got some yeah. big goals and it's exciting. Yeah. Um, so, so what we're doing, uh, um, at what we did in May was we went out and we asked everyone, literally everyone, including my mother, who's never had a 401k plan. Hey, what's the one thing that would make 401ks better from your perspective? We're all housebound. We're during, we're, it's during COVID, you know, people are trying to figure out what's going on with their uh, investment accounts when suddenly we're having the first volatility forever. Uh, in, in, a, in a very long time. And at that moment in time, we reached out and we sent a survey out through technology. And again, this is a big, huge technology investment. Um, we asked everyone, like, what would make it better? What would make 401k better from your perspective? And a crazy thing happens when you go into listen-only mode. Oftentimes, your customer gives you 
way more innovation just by you asking them than you could ever come up with on your own. So we had over 480 responses to a two month long survey. Um, and I'd encourage anyone to take the survey because it'll help us and it'll help make the industry better. And, um, you know, we gleaned from that, we, we were asking ourselves the question, okay, which of these two solutions, CalSavers or 401k is better based on what people are saying they want. And the crazy thing was the thing that people are uniformly agree on, whether you're a part of the industry, whether you're an employer or whether you're a participant is that the things that people want out of their 401k plans are only available in a 401k plan and they're not available in a payroll deductible to IRA mechanism. Those things are number one, employees will uh, leave. They will leave if you threaten the match. Um, they might not say that they're going to leave, but in reality, um, the statistics bear out employees are inter interested and would leave. So one of the things that Cal Savers does not do is allow for an employer contribution. So if you're going to set yourself up with a program that prevents your employees from, do, you know, from experiencing what it is that they require, then aren't you really putting yourself at a competitive disadvantage in, in the labor markets? And the answer to that is an unqualified yes. So 401k is for work. Number two, um, I'd love to have this thing enable me to save all that I need for retirement. That'd be nice. That's its purpose. Um, at a $6,000, you know, whatever it is, um, threshold for an IRA in a given year, um, you're going to fall short of that. Right. And also it's your responsibility for making sure you don't go over that. So now it's your responsibility for ensuring that you fail. And, and to me, it's like, no, like that doesn't make any sense. Um, and as much as anything else, the 401k as a construct um, does provide for a lot of flexibility. Um, and, and, and that's where it gets, you know, particularly impressive is the very IRA construct that you can't have if you are over a certain wage is available in a 401k plan. So if the state had simply done the right thing um, and set up a plan and conformed to ERISA and engaged advisors who work with employers and participants, they'd have the right thing. Um, but as it turns out, they don't, they didn't, they took a different path. And um, now you're allowed one fund company, you're allowed six total or seven total investments. Um, and uh, there's not even an attempt to say that these are the best for you. They're just a solution. Um, so will it improve things? Probably because people who weren't saving are, um, they'll have access to a workplace plan, which is kind of important. Um, but the, the construct is wrong. The 401k actually is and delivers all the things that the market wants. Um, now, as the 401k plan company itself, um, we are connecting and aligning financial providers across the country, and we're doing it without asking anything of them. So Jake for his is a very accomplished advisor who's done amazing work for physicians, and he runs his practice his own way. Um, and we don't want to get in the way of that at all. What we want to do is make sure that employers who are in that space understand that if you're going to go to an advisor and you're in Utah or California and you're a physician or you're in the medical services industry, Jake's your dude. Like Jake's the guy who you should be talking to, not me. I'm in California, right? Um, so advisors for their part have always existed as long as I've been doing 401k plan with one eye over their shoulder wondering what's my competitor doing or going to say. And we haven't behaved oftentimes uh, collegially. And so what I'm trying to do is create a context in which that could happen. And the only way that I knew how to do it, um, once I got the survey results from advisors who, who, who answered the same survey was this, I don't wanna change how you're doing it if the way that you're doing it is aligned with the best interest of your customer. Um, on a really basic level, if you're an advisor in any other state and you're really good at it, what you can bring to a conversation, not even a, a financial relationship, but a conversation with me and an employer who's in your state is a knowledge and understanding of your state's plan so that we can bounce ideas off each other. And I think that um, just being able to communicate openly without exposing one's practice or one's customers or whatever it is that you're trying to protect, um, your ideas, whatever it is, that you may have that makes you distinct 
is a good thing. It's a healthy thing and it happens in other industries and it really needs to happen in the 4K plant industry. So connection and alignment, agree. really. Um, yeah. yeah and, that, and we have some things. God. Sorry, to add to that real quick. I mean, that's where I find that I've really struggled is that everybody thinks they have a secret sauce. And I, I don't think there is such a thing. I think there is people that are executing and people that put in the work and you don't have a competitive advantage over someone else just because you think you have some secret, your competitive advantage is you show up and why not help each other learn about things like the things like this. So we understand how we can uh, really help the end user, which is ultimately there's not enough margin in the front business to just do it for money. If you're a money driven person and you ended up in the industry, you made a mistake because <laughs> there is a much bigger underlying why I stick around in this industry because you're actually helping families succeed and have more time with each other. That, that has to be somewhere deep inside of you. Otherwise there's a lot of other money to be made other places. So that, that to me is the exciting part about what you're doing is you're building this community around this whole problem of this regulation that is starting to form in each state and how do we help each other, make sure that we engage the right employers and teach the right thing to do based on where your company is set up and how many employees you have wherever, which state, because that's a lot to keep track of for one advisor. And there's just so much business, like you said, 750,000 employers in California alone, you know? So, um, and I'd uh, add, funny. I'd add, I just got to, you know, the authenticity with you, Jake, is the thing that really stands out to me. What you just said is you don't have a secret sauce when it comes to the investments what you have uh, is a secret sauce when it comes to ethic and alignment. And you're not just saying that you said it two weeks ago from the actual lobby of <laughs> a physician's office where you were going in and doing the work to get to know the people. And um, I love that um, for its authenticity. And I love hearing you say that now as far as the secret sauce goes, because there are things that differentiate service providers. Um, the biggest in a time when you can't get on an airplane and go visit a client is the fact that you're in the local market. Um, yeah. realistically during COVID, I'm not going to Florida and I'm not going to Utah and I'm not going to Texas. Um, but how cool is it that even through zoom, I can hit a button and add my pal who is in Texas or who is in Utah or who is in Florida to a conversation with a prospective client, you know, someone in the early stages, not a, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to bring, you know, my entire practice to someone else's conversation, but I might help consult to someone who's just trying to figure this out. So if there's someone who's out there, who's in another state, um, it's really important that you get, get connected and aligned if you're going to set up a retirement plan with someone who's a pro like Jake is, um, or like many of Jake's listeners. And so from that point of view, be open, connect, collaborate, you know, we're not, one of the things that's always amazed me about the foreign K industry is that, um, the people who, use the best interest standard of care, which is the advisor as a baseline, um, oftentimes are swamped by the people for whom it's a stretch goal, <laughs> which is a lot of the people in this community who want nothing more than to get product and market and get things sold because it's their job. And you know what, there's a role for that too. There are these companies who haven't started plans and they need to, and it requires people to talk to them. Um, it requires people to talk to them about their personal situation. If that person's a sales rep, then great. You're going to get your product and you're going to be off and away. But if you work with an advisor, you're going to get something that's tailored precisely to your situation and someone who cares. Um, because in the end, every advisor who's operating independently in the U.S. right now took the risk of breaking off from some financial institution because they wanted to do something better for their clients. That's the AMO for advisors. Yeah. And it's fascinating because there's a lot of wholesalers too, that I think are struggling to try and figure this whole new 2020 where they can't travel. They're not buying. I mean, I even had talked to a new one the other day that just took over my area and he's, he ended the call saying, well, I can't wait to, you know, when I can travel again, I'll come out and take you to lunch. And I, I, I don't need your lunch. Like, I don't, I mean, that's great. It'd be good to get to know you better. And that's great. If you want to listen and, and, understand my practice and see where you could add some value. But I, I mean, I don't, it doesn't, that's not going to work anymore. So what can, what can these wholesalers do? I mean, I think a big part of that is they've got to figure out branding. They've got to figure out 
um, how to build some trust because they've lost it in different areas over the years. And we're seeing, you know, lawsuits all the time hitting the headlines. And it, it comes down to, do you have a quality advisor that understands your business, just like you would have a family physician for your family, right? They understand what's going on with your, your history and, and, you know, what's looking forward and we can make better decisions when we know what you've done and where you're trying to go. You know, if the advisor just shows up and, and pushes whatever product was the guy bought him lunch the day before, I mean, that's just not, it's not what we're looking for. And it's understanding the custom solutions of what's happening in regulation, what's happening with technology and having really that advisor be a part of your team to the point that they understand your business. Like I, I would love to see a day where like the advisor, the 401k advisor spends, you know, more time in different executive meetings that are strategic around benefits and compensation. Like they should be part of those conversations to bring ideas of what their expertise is so that the decision makers of the company can move forward with the right things because they're not 401k experts. They don't have time to, to watch this stuff. Um, so a lot of them will, will not even know about CalSavers till they get that first bill in the first month. And it's like, Oh crap, we got a problem here. And then they'll yeah, and, to and to just like, you know, take that one step further with our, our peers, the, the, the wholesalers, the DCIOs and the others to help us actually deliver the solution to the, to the, the customer. I think it's really important to point this out. There is an industry constructed barrier between the wholesalers and the DCIOs and the end user. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it's easy to get someone to take your lunch, but it's oftentimes more difficult to get that same person to give the lunch to your client instead. And so from, from my point of view, one of the things that I'm focusing on is I have discovered in, in 25 years of this, some amazing people, some very great DCIOs who frankly helped me get this thing going. Um, and, and secondarily, some great wholesalers as well, who I would never hesitate to bring into a client interaction. Um, because again, as with Jake, I sense sincerity. So I think like it's important to make sure that you surround yourself with really good people. And there are some all-stars out there, uh, you know, uh, who um, have an artificial barrier between them and the end user. And one of the things that we're trying to do is to, um, at the forum company that's a little bit different, is to break some of that down. Um, and as an example, when we did our presentation in um, uh, advisor perspectives and continuing education, we asked the audience, hey, who do you like to work with? Who's like, who's, who, are, who have you already picked? Um, because we want to get you aligned with those people. And sure enough, you know, they're the same people who we use. So um, it, it costs me nothing to help a DCIO or a record keeper get to someone who likes what they have to say to amplify that relationship. Um, so that's an intent, a specific intent of the 401k plan companies to, to seek and create alignment for efficiency's sake. Because if Jake already likes this investment, it's really important that that DCIO knows it so that they can support Jake and Jake's customers in the end. Uh, so then the question goes, how do you get the resources to get the, from you to the client? Right. And I think that's, that's part of the, part of the, um, the industry's job as well. You mentioned the health brokers and who's going to explain this construct. We're um, partnering with uh, Dickerson at a webinar in about uh, it's October 4th, I think no, 5th, October 6th. Um, to go out and talk to um, the health broker community about some of these problems. Third, distribution. Like um, I've discovered, and I, I can barely keep her myself, one of the coolest people on the planet who goes in and does tax credit recovery at the front end for um, clients so they understand the Secure Act's tax credits in a different way, which is um, you may have potentially overpaid a couple hundred, 300,000, in one case, a million dollars more taxes than you needed to because you didn't claim the R&D credit. Um, and so to Megan Gonsorik, if you're out there listening, uh, you're going to have some new fans soon because there is no more effective way to get into and in front of a client to explain how sincere you are about their best interest than clawing back a massive check from a state and federal treasury. And that's effectively what R&D tax credit consultants do. So I 
go to market that way. And I want to share that information with anyone who's out there. And then finally, um, like in our case, we are going and we are hosting meetings now between wholesalers and advisors who like them. We want to get an advisor on the ground in all 50 states to receive all the traffic that we can create for state plans from state plans so that they can go serve their market the best way they know how. And that takes a team, right? You know, guys like Jake and I go out and we, we work really hard for our clients. Um, but we can't operate completely independently. We need a team and we need people who are aligned with us and people who understand that in the end, if the end user, which is the employer and the participant are served, that's all we're asking for. <laughs> it's all we want. And if you surround yourself with that kind of advisor who has technical expertise, um, you know, it's the SEAL Team 6. And that's really what I feel like, you know, with apologies to the actual SEAL Team 6 who are awesome. Um, we're really trying to create the best of the best of the best. Um, in terms of state plan knowledge and solution delivery. And I think we're well on our way. So um, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, no, that's super exciting. It's tons of good nuggets right there. I think, uh, Tom, you're, you're onto something really, really big and the positive outcomes from your efforts, you know, the fact that practitioners are getting involved, you know, people that are running a business, manage the book of business and we could just stay quiet, focus on our business. And I know there's a ton of advisors that do really well and enjoy that. Um, I've chosen a different path and we're very aligned in that way where we want to be loud and we want to bring together the right community and we want to make an impact, which I think leads to a longer term fulfillment and we're seeing more success from doing that. And ultimately, you know, it comes back to that why. So I appreciate everything you're doing, Tom. I'm so glad that we connected. Um, I've really been fascinated by watching how quickly you're moving. I think it's, uh, I'm trying to do the same thing. And so I think we'll, we'll continue to work together and um, bring more value. We'll have to dive deeper more into some of those other topics um, around investments even and, and just different philosophies there. Because I think, I think a lot of advisors, advisors lead with that. And there's a lot we can kind of unpack when we talk about the investment component, because I leave it for the last part. I don't really even get into that initially. So um, I'm much more excited about understanding regulations and plan design and then kind of going from there strategically with the company. So thank you, Tom. Yeah. Any other additional things you want to add for, for the advisors and wholesalers listening? I do. Uh, three very specific things. Number one, keep listening to 401k Jake because you're killing it, man. I, I absolutely love everything that you've done on the show. And I, it, it took me a while to understand what you were doing. And then I was like, wow, he's trying to help other advisors do the right thing. Um, <laughs> it's pretty simple. Why, you know, why complicate it? Um, and, and, not, but yet you, you are moving fast and I've seen like, you're getting information out to the right people the right way faster, um, than I've ever seen anyone do it. So that's pretty cool. Um, number two, I want to leave every advisor out there who's listening to this with this thought, 750,000 new plans in the state of California is equal to 75 plans for every single registered investment advisor in the U S. Okay. <laughs> wow. 75 that's, new plans. That's it's amazing. Massive. It's huge. So it's too much for any one person to take on. So stop thinking about the guy to your right as your competitor and start working with him. If you can, if you're willing to, um, to make sure that those plans wind up in the right place, which is in my opinion, not in the state's plan. Um, and then third and finally, uh, I hope you guys will connect up with us on LinkedIn and, and follow a shameless self plug. Um, I, I, I really do need to have, the advisors who really want to know and understand their state's plan and be able to compare it to California's just as someone to be a resource. And I think if we can all focus on being resources for one another, whether you're a DCIO or a wholesaler of a record keeper or, you know, an advisor, um, work together, collaborate. Um, there's a, there's a saying that's, I, I recently adopted as my own, which is if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. That's it. That's what we're about. I love that. I love you. I've heard you say that before and it really resonated with me because we, we are all trained to, we're all very ambitious. I feel like you have to be ambitious to be an advisor to some degree and whether you want to just go at it quietly in your own little silo or you want to be part of our community, you know, we welcome however you want to be involved. And I think there's going to be some great great additions to the team. And like Tom's trying to get one advisor in each state. So 
if you enjoyed this and, and want to talk to Tom, reach out to him because he's, he's trying to get that done ASAP. Obviously the deadline for Cal Sabres for a hundred plus employees is Wednesday. So we want to have um, that team built out. And, you know, as I'm building out the four one club, which will have a little bit different element of the teaching and, and helping you get, um, you know, your digital marketing figured out and a lot of other things that will come with it, more of a community. Um, but what Tom's doing is very niche driven in the fact that we're going to understand each state's plan and how it impacts your own region, your own area and your own niche. So thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. I've had so much fun. I'm, I'm going to keep, um, keep our conversations going. We need to get uh, a lot done here very quickly. So um, reach thank out you, to Tom. Thank you, thank you Jake. And, and keep killing it, man, because the, the 401k Jake thing is just, it's awesome. Guys keep following. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.